Hello and welcome to another episode of Underworld Diary. If you've been enjoying the stories shared on this channel, feel free to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to help the channel grow. In today's episode, we will delve into the story of one of the Gambino family's most powerful captains, James Failure. Known for his razor-sharp business acumen, Failure strategically infiltrated numerous legitimate enterprises across New York, amassing an alleged millions through a diverse array of income streams. However, it was his infiltration into the lucrative world of waste management that truly catapulted him to the upper levels of power within the Gambino family. Using his powerful connections, Failure would ascend to the status of one of the era's most influential captains. Failure was born in the Bensonhurst section of Brooklyn in 1919. He would grow up in the neighborhood, at the same time as many prominent future mafiosos. He, like many others, would grow up feeling the effects of the Great Depression, making him turn to the streets at a young age. With other Italian-Americans largely controlling criminal activities in the area, Failure allegedly began associating with prominent mobsters. As the Mafia expanded beyond bootlegging during Phyla's teenage years, he and many of his peers became familiar with classic Mafia enterprises such as bookmaking, extortion, and gambling. Despite gaining this early education in the underworld, Failure remained relatively unknown to the public until the early 1950s. It was during this time, in his early 30s, that Failure had his first run-in with law enforcement. In 1951, he was arrested on charges related to bookmaking and illegal gambling, ultimately being found guilty and slapped with a mere $25 fine. Undeterred, Failure allegedly continued to develop his operations in bookmaking and gambling, forging connections with major mafia figures like Carlo Gambino. It has been alleged that Failure became a made member of the Mafia at some point during the 1950s, a period marked by internal power struggles within the Gambino family. Serving as Gambino's driver, Failure was purportedly privy to the plot to eliminate then-boss Albert Anastasia. This scheme came to fruition in 1957 when Anastasia was murdered at his barber shop. The successful hit catapulted Gambino to the top of the family hierarchy and bolstered Phyla's influence within the organization. With his close associate Gambino now at the helm of the family, Failure embarked on expanding beyond traditional Mafia activities. However, before this expansion could fully take off, Failure found himself entangled in another high-profile murder case. The captain he reported to, Armand Rava, was allegedly killed for remaining loyal to Anastasia instead of aligning with Gambino. This event prompted Phyla's transfer to the crew of Anthony Rizzo, where he received a crash course in infiltrating legitimate businesses. Armed with newfound knowledge and backed by Carlo Gambino's support, Failure set his sights on the waste management industry in New York. Unlike other waste management systems in the country, New York's system operates with a distinct separation between the private and public sectors. The Department of Sanitation doesn't handle garbage collection for local businesses, leaving them to purchase waste collection services from private hauling companies. Recognizing an opportunity ripe for exploitation, Failure, allegedly leveraging his mafia connections, seized control of various facets of the private waste management industry. Through a combination of bribery, extortion, and intimidation tactics targeting both private haulers and local businesses, Failure asserted dominance. By monopolizing the market, setting prices, selling contracts, and eliminating competition, Failure orchestrated a lucrative enterprise. With estimates suggesting the large hauling company serviced thousands of customers, each paying hundreds of dollars weekly for collection services, the potential profits soared into the tens of millions. Positioned at the forefront of this operation, Failure became a central figure not only within the Gambino family but also throughout the broader mafia. His success not only brought immense wealth but also garnered him substantial power and respect within the family, ultimately resulting in his rapid promotion to the rank of captain and the establishment of his own crew. Purportedly ascending to the rank of captain during the 1960s, Failure assumed leadership of a crew comprised of notable Mafia figures, including Joseph, Joey Cigars, Franciolino, Joseph the Cat, Laforte, Luis Astuto, and Thomas, Tommy Sparrow, Spinelli. This formidable crew diversified its portfolio, engaging in both legitimate and illicit enterprises across the region, with a particular focus on gambling and loan sharking operations. Coupled with the staggering profits from the garbage industry, Phyla's crew swiftly emerged as one of the most lucrative within the entire Mafia network. Drawing on his longtime associate from grade school, Bill, Willie the Fox, Martoccia, Failure entrusted him with the management and expansion of their garbage racket. 
This strategic partnership enabled Failure to consolidate control over the local Trade Waste Association of Greater New York Union, further augmenting their financial gains by allegedly siphoning off a significant portion of the association's dues. With this immense wealth, Failia invested in a social club known as the Veterans and Friends Social Club, located on 86th Street and 14th Avenue in Bensonhurst. Operating his crew from this establishment, Failia implemented stringent measures to safeguard their operations, including strict rules against discussing criminal activities over wiretap lines. Failia himself adhered rigorously to these guidelines, refusing to broach the topic of alleged crimes even during meetings with the new family boss, Paul Castellano, at his residence. This cautious approach proved invaluable as the 1980s dawned, witnessing a wave of legal troubles for numerous Mafia members, including Castellano, stemming from intercepted conversations. The wiretap-related concerns eventually, in part, culminated in one of the most notorious murders in Mafia history in 1985, when Castellano was gunned down outside Sparks Steakhouse. Fila's direct connection to this event, as the man Castellano was reported to be meeting with, compelled him to operate with even greater discretion as John Gotti assumed leadership of the family following Castellano's demise, marking the second boss of Fila's tenure to meet a violent end. Despite their differing approaches, Gotti was said to have respected failure and allowed him to continue operations within the family, much as he had under previous leadership. Revered as a significant figure within the family ranks, Failia commanded respect from emerging Mafia members. However, in 1986, Failia encountered a brief brush with the law when he was indicted on racketeering charges. Demonstrating the efficacy of his stringent no-talking policy, the charges were dropped in 1987 due to a lack of incriminating conversations captured on wiretaps, enabling Failia to maintain his lucrative enterprises throughout the latter part of the 1980s. This status quo persisted until 1989 when Failia, ever cautious, approached Gotti with suspicions that a member of his crew, Thomas, Tommy Sparrow, might be cooperating with law enforcement. Allegedly, Gotti not only sanctioned Fila's request to eliminate Spinelli but also enlisted the aid of his underboss, Sammy Gravano, in carrying out the hit. The murder took place inside a Brooklyn factory later that year, shielding Failia from immediate prosecution. However, Gotti's subsequent arrest and imprisonment in 1990 left a significant power vacuum within the family. While many anticipated Failure to ascend to the top position, conflicting reports emerged. Some suggest Failure declined the role, leaving it to be filled by Gotti Jr., while others claim he assumed the position of acting boss for a brief period. Regardless of his official title, Failure retained the unwavering respect of Gotti Jr. and the family, making his support crucial for any significant policy changes. However, his time in this elevated position proved short-lived, as at the age of 72, Failia found himself facing serious charges for the first time in his lengthy criminal career. Despite his ability to evade law enforcement scrutiny throughout his lifetime, Failia found himself ensnared in a significant racketeering murder case in 1991. This turn of events unfolded after Sammy Gravano implicated Failia in the 1989 Spinelli murder while testifying in another case. Gravano's testimony painted Failia as a key figure in the underworld, with Gravano asserting quote, he controlled the garbage industry for us, referring to Fila's alleged role in the Mafia's operations. Gravano elaborated on Fila's involvement in Spinelli's murder, recounting how Failia brought the issue to Gotti's attention and subsequently received authorization for the hit. The damning testimony provided the government with a compelling case against Failia, leading to his official indictment on conspiracy to commit murder in aid of racketeering charges in 1993. Faced with the weight of the evidence against him, Failia opted to accept a plea deal, resulting in a seven-year prison sentence. With his advanced age and declining health, Failia would serve only four years behind bars before his passing in 1999 at the Federal Medical Center for Prisoners in Texas. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Underworld Diary. If you've enjoyed the story shared on our channel, don't forget to show your support by hitting the like and subscribe button below. Do you have a topic you'd like to see us explore in future episodes? If so, drop a comment below and let us know. Otherwise, stay tuned for another story from the Underworld.